Radio, Radio Shack. Shack. Take a look at this Radio Shack regulated 12 volt power supply. Open it up, take a look inside, and run some tests on it. It is vintage. I don't think they make it anymore. Pretty sure they don't make it anymore, but you can pick them up used. Pretty nice little power supply. It's not real powerful. It's a it's rated 2.5 amps, but it might be enough for uh, operating some items. Well, on the front here, you have the power switch and a LED indicator light. That's this aluminum heat sink. I always thought it was kind of funny that they put the um, fins horizontal, so there's real no benefit from airflow. But I'm sure it's extruded, and you really can't extrude vertical when you extruded it this way, so, you know. That's another story. The bottom is aluminum casing. In the back here, you have the output terminals, the power cord that goes into the unit. Actual rating is 13.8 volt DC, 2.5 amps. And we'll check that, but I, I'm pretty sure this one puts out more like 14 and a half volts or so. It has a pretty sensitive little breaker, circuit breaker on there. Even if you overload a little bit, this will trip out in a few seconds. And it says there are three amps. And we're in. For some reason they use these Robinson type square head screws. See those a lot used in furniture but not that common in electronics. Well, we have the power transformer here, power switch, there's a slow blow one amp fuse, full wave bridge, using a Nichicon um, 4700 microfarad 25 volt capacitor, and there's two transistors, there's a it's probably a driver and then the main transistor under there. Zener diode, likely. So yeah, not really too much to it. That's the circuit breaker and of course the output terminals. Oh, I actually found the manual to this thing. Back in the day, Radio Shack used to put the schematics in the back, and there it is. Pretty basic regulated circuit. You have your mains coming in here to the on-off switch. There's the one amp slow blow fuse, transformer, bridge rectifier, 4700 uh, microfarad filter cap. And it comes into this uh, 0.275 watt resistor. The reason I think that's there is to protect these transistors in case this is directly shorted. You don't want a sudden jolt of current from the capacitor which could blow that transistor. So that kind of limits the current a little bit. Allows this circuit breaker here some time to operate. So this section here is the actual voltage regulator. This is your typical emitter follower Darlington type circuit. Of course emitter followers have no voltage gain, it's all current gain, so you take your voltage reference, which they're using a Zener diode, and it looks like it's 16 volts, and you have a couple diode uh, junction drops with the transistors and it ends up around 14 and a half or so volts. Well, this resistor here biases the Zener diode. You have to put enough current through that Zener to make it work and it'll show that proper Zener voltage. And there's a little ripple filter cap on here. You don't want any of the ripple getting into this circuit here because it'll just amplify that ripple 
I'm not sure about this small cap. I think it's a Miller cap to kind of the, prevent oscillation of the circuit. You know, it's a Darlington circuit has very high gain, a current gain. So uh, having that there helps to eliminate the, any uh, potential for high frequency oscillation. And it is a Darlington and they have this resistor here because you don't, you know, you have some charge left over if this transistor drops current here, you can, you know, it leaves charge on the gate with no, or on the base with nowhere to go, so this acts as a uh, drain for that. Something you might want to look up concerning Darlington transistors. And of course there's the breaker and the LED indicator with the current limit resistor. So that's in a nutshell the uh, very basic regulator circuit in this thing. So now let's hook it up and take some measurements. Okay, I'm measuring some voltages here with no load on the supply using my little Radio Shack TRMS digital multimeter. I guess that's true RMS. I bought this thing when Radio Shacks were closing last year for $26. Really fond of this little meter. I mean, it's it's not a fancy fluke or anything, but you know, I'm a weekend warrior. I don't really need it. It's accurate. I tested with uh, precision or fairly decent precision components, and yeah, it measures things pretty accurately. It has all the functions I need. I'm still on the original batteries. I like it more than this meter. While this meter is technically better, um, this thing goes through batteries. It takes 9 volt battery and I have to keep putting new ones in every other month or so. So yeah, I tend to lean towards this meter. But anyway, I measured across the secondary of the transformer. By the way, I do have I have it set up on the uh, Variac here, set at exactly 120 volts, and I'm getting 17.35 volts on the secondary of the transformer. Now, after you uh, rectify it with the full wave bridge, and then filter it with a capacitor, the DC voltage on the on the um, inside, I guess, of the uh, regulator, I should say before the regulator, is 21.72 volts. And let me get an output reading here. And the regulated output is 15.11 volts. So when you design a regulator, the unloaded DC voltage going into that regulator is going to be quite high, like we found it was 21.72, and as we load that down, it's going to pull that voltage down. And we want, at the maximum load, we don't want a regulator to run into the ripple. This is kind of the ripple. You know, the ripple is kind of small, and as you add load, the ripple becomes larger. But you don't want your regulated output to have ripple on it. There is some voltage called the dropout voltage of the circuit, and um, you have to stay above that or you'll have ripple on your regulated output which you probably don't want. So with this supply here at this point of two and a half amps we want to make sure that our ripple is still high enough that it's going to get smoothed out with the regulator. It's not going to be you know showing up on the output. So now what I want to do is put a load on this output at its maximum rating and measure the voltages and uh, see if there's any ripple. 
Well, I have a dummy load set up. I'm going to use a MOSFET transistor. In well, my parts drawer, I found this 2SK2749. I scavenged it out of something, I don't know. But it has a dissipation rating of 150 watts. And these MOSFETs are perfect for dummy loads because all you have to do is supply a voltage to the gate, and vary that voltage up and down, and monitor the current going through it. Current times current through the device times the voltage across the device is how much power it's going to dissipate. So, you know, you can make sure you're not going to overload it or anything. So I mounted it to this heat sink, which is clamped onto this huge solid block of aluminum or aluminium, depending on which part of the world you're in. And that should handle our dissipation. And I connected it to my power supply, so I just have to adjust the voltage and and when we hit two and a half amps, we can just uh, read the voltage here. So right now there's no current, 15.5 volts. Oh no, I'm getting the low battery warning. Here's the circuit. So here's the power supply coming in. There's the meter, MOSFET, that's the negative side. Then you just supply a voltage to the gate. And you can adjust that voltage and uh, that'll control the current going through this. So uh, I'm using my power supply and I'll just turn up the current or the voltage and watch the current come up here. There it goes. And we'll just, ooh, quite touchy. I want to get this down to around two and a half volts and it's a little touchy to get exactly pulled it down to 14.3 volts or so and well that thing ooh, it got warm not real warm but warm enough now I'm just gonna overload it so you can see it's uh really overloaded now and it pulled it down to 12.6 so yeah that, that should pop out any second but I'm going to put the scope on this thing and see if it's rippling any okay I hooked the scope up to the output of the power supply see if we get ripple I did have to put a capacitor across the uh, MOSFET there because it was oscillating at 2 point something megahertz. So we'll bring up the current. Not 2.5 or so. Eh, we're a little bit more, but it's not. You know, we're not getting any sort of uh, ripple. I crank it way up. And it's still not rippling. So it's a pretty good power supply. No ripple. Well, that's my review of the Radio Shack regulated power supply. Pretty good if you can find one used. Even if it needs some service, it's pretty easy to fix. But I would uh, certainly recommend one. That's it. Thanks for watching.